G'day, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, and today I'm going to answer the question, why are solar panels not producing as many watts of power as the panels are rated for? Now this is a question that comes out a lot from uh, customers who buy a system based on the description of it by PV watts, the number of watts of panels. So you'll see ads for a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system, or a 5 kilowatt system, or a 10 kilowatt system. Now the industry in Australia and New Zealand, and actually many parts of the world, talk about the peak watts of the panels as a way of describing the system. But for those engineers out there, they know that a system is more than just one component. But it's kind of industry shorthand for how many panels you have. So why do you not really get those watts? Why do you get the, um, a somewhat lower figure when you look at the inverter, for instance? So for those of you who've got an inverter system, you're probably familiar with this. You might have a 6.6 .6 kilowatt solar PV system on your roof, typically something like 20, 330 watt panels at today's kind of configuration. And when you look at the data on your smartphone app or on the inverter, if it has a display, you might rarely see more than about four and a half to kilowatt coming out of that system. Maybe it'll peak at five kilowatts sometimes. Uh, that's all to do with losses in the system. Just like a car will have so many kilowatts at the output shaft of the motor, by the time that power has got through the drive chain, then through the wheels, then through friction, and then onto a road, and then overcoming air resistance, the output will be somewhat less in terms of performance. The same is true of a solar PV system. What are the main problems? Well, one of them's physics. As a solar panel heats up, it actually loses voltage and therefore power. So the main loss in a PV system actually is heat, causing the panels to produce less power. However, panels are rated at what's known as standard test conditions. That's 1000 watts per square meter of solar radiation, a cell temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, not the air, but the actual cell temperature, and an air mass of 1.5, which is really about the spectral distribution of the light passing through the atmosphere at approximately a 45 degree angle. Now, all of those test conditions aren't real world, unless you live in a very cold place, such as um, you know winter time in Germany, um, you're unlikely to actually get the peak rated power of the panels at um, full sun. That's because the panels heat up something like 25 to 35 degrees above ambient when exposed to sunlight. So their cell temperature is nowhere near 25 degrees for places like Australia. Most of the time, the panels will be well up in the 50s and 60s. As a result, they'll be losing power. So there's the biggest first loss. And of course, summertime when you think you're gonna be producing the most power, uh, it's the peak watts that are most affected. But here's the good news, summer has longer days. It has more solar radiation falling on the surface of your roof. And so actually in summertime, you generally make more renewable energy. Energy and power are different things. What are other losses in the system? Well, the wire that connects the solar panel to the inverter. There's a small loss in resistance in that wire. Then you've got the losses due to the conversion, typically from DC, solar panel DC, to AC to supply the grid or to supply your home. You'll also have other hard to spot losses, such as dust and dirt. The fact that the panels aren't perfectly clean, a little bit of dust and dirt is normal, and if your panels are inclined at 10 degrees or more, and it rains regularly, you're likely to keep them pretty clean. But you know, if you're under um, a lot of dust or in a location where gum trees drop um, their detritus on the roof, you may find that your um, dirt buildup is quite significant. Another one, and this is quite a subtle one, is module mismatch. Now, when they manufacture modules, there's always a bit of variation from one cell to another. And that small module mismatch can lead to a small difference in performance. But in a solar PV system, uh, typically on a string inverter, all the panels are connected in series. That means they all have to pull together the same current. Well, actually they're pushing together the same current. And the weakest link will determine the current of the string. So it's kind of a long-winded way of saying, even though you bought a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system, um, the actual power it puts out in the middle of a sunny day might be closer to five or even less. Now those limitations aren't the main deal. The main deal is how much renewable energy is it producing? Now energy is power over time. 
So if your designer of your system and your installer has done a good job, they will have provided you with some performance estimates. It's actually a requirement of our standard. And those performance estimates should give you an indication of how much renewable energy, it may be an annual average, or it might be a more detailed report showing a monthly variation in the amount of energy your system should produce. Because the other really big factor in terms of energy production is orientation. Is the orientation uh, towards the equator, such as north facing in the southern hemisphere, or is it facing to the east or west or both? And so orientation will affect the performance of the system. And on top of that, you've got the fact that there's different pricing between what the utility charges you for imported electricity and what the utility pays you for exported electricity. And so there may be a optimum design that your installer would perhaps consider in terms of what best meets your needs. You know, if you're someone who goes to work during the day and there's no one at home and the sun's shining, you're probably better off actually having a system that's producing more energy at the ends of the day, the beginning and the end, when you might be at home, particularly in summertime. So those are all the factors that get built into a good system design. So just focusing on the peak watts of the panels is really of little significance. It's the energy it produces that really matters and the cost and carbon offsets as a result. So there you go. That's why solar watts are not real watts. The watts that you actually get out of your system are the ones that matter, not the peak watts of the panels on the roof. Anyway, I hope that explained that little curly problem. See ya.